Hello. Today we'll be making crepes with Greek yogurt, caramelized pears, and candy pecans. I'm Chef Trent, and you're watching Public Aprons Cooking School Online. All right, so we're gonna start with our candy pecan. Uh, we have a large mixing bowl here that we're just gonna add an egg white to, and then also a little bit of water. We're gonna vigorously whisk this with a balloon whisk, and we're just gonna incorporate the air. You're gonna see the consistency and volume change a little bit, the more you vigorously whip, as you can see there. We're gonna stop there, and we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar. Mixture gets thicker and thicker, your sugar dissolves, and it starts to get incredibly shiny, like a melted marshmallow. And we call this ribbon state, because you can technically make a little figure eight out of it. So to this mixture, we're just gonna add a little bit of allspice and a little bit of green cardamom. And you're just creating this wonderful, sweet, aromatic mixture that's gonna stick to your pecan as it cooks in the oven. And from this state, we are just going to add a little bit of salt. We'll give that one little quick whisk. We'll get rid of our whisk. And we're gonna gently fold in our pecans. These are half pecans and you're just coating, essentially just folding this mixture. You don't wanna stir, stir, stir very hard. All you're gonna do is just deflate the air out of the meringue. So from this point, you go right onto a parchment lined baking tray. Spread these out evenly. Now these go into a preheated 250 degree oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. Let's go grab the rest of our ingredients for our crepes. While our pecans are cooking in the oven, we're gonna start with our crepe or crepe batter. So we're gonna start with our wet ingredients first. An egg, three-fourths of a cup of milk. We will bust our yolk with our whisk. Just gradually stir to mix that together and then slowly add our milk. And you're just incorporating the egg and milk together. We also have a little bit of melted butter a little bit of salt, and also some golden sugar. Now once all of our wet is mixed together, we essentially start with our flour and then slowly add our wet to our flour. This is rule of thumb in the baking and pastry world. This is just to ensure that we work out all of our lumps before adding all of our liquid. The more you whisk this mixture, the more gluten you're actually bringing out into the flour. So it's gonna ensure that you have a tough batter if you don't let this relax. At this state, I can really get in there with my whisk and work out all of those flour lumps. Making sure to use the edge of the whisk to kinda scrape everything off the side. and giving everything a nice, consistent look. So here we are with a beautiful, smooth crepe batter. Our glutens have essentially activated, so we're gonna allow this to rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. While our crepe batter is resting in the fridge, we're gonna start with our pears. With a pear, you just have our little stem at the top. We'll go ahead and just remove that guy. Makes for easier cutting. And then we're going to slice our pear in half, keep it in half, hold it in the palm of your hand, and just use a melon baller to get the core right out of the middle of your pear. So with our cores removed, we're going to quarter the pears so you get a nice wedge. This is medium heat. We're going to add a little bit of coconut oil. It's high heat cooking, so you're gonna get a nice sear on your pear. And then also we're gonna add a little bit of butter. The reason we're adding both 
is to raise the smoke point of your butter so your butter does not burn. With our pan up to temp and all our butter is melted, we're gonna go ahead and start with our pears. And the reason we're doing this is just to ensure that we're moving from one side to the other, knowing which pears to turn first. So again, just gently laying them in the hot oil and get a nice hard sear on both sides, about one to two minutes per side. But you'll start to see a lot of steam and evaporation happening off the top of the pan. You'll use your tongs just to check the bottom of the pear to ensure it's the color that you want it to be. Flip your pears over, and we're gonna start caramelizing the other side. So the other side is nicely colored. We're going to add our lemon juice. We're just gonna get a nice deglaze off this pan, bring up all those stuck brown sugar bits at the bottom of the pan. This will reduce slightly, but all the sugar in the pear is actually gonna give it a lovely flavor. Then we'll take it off the heat. We're going to add a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of kosher salt. Stir this mixture together. The oils will come out of the lemon zest, give you a wonderful fragrance. And we're essentially just gonna set these to the side and keep them warm while we go grab our crepe batter. Now that our crepe batter has rested, We've just passed it through a fine metal strainer. Where you want to make sure that your pan is hot and preheated. Otherwise, you won't develop any color on your crepe. So we'll go straight down the middle of our pan, and then we're just going to roll with our wrist. And we're going to go all the way around the pan. And if there's a couple gaps, it's OK. You can use just a little bit of extra batter just to cover in your gaps. But make sure that everything's nice and even. You'll know the crepe is ready to flip as soon as the edges start to release. Let your crepe cook a majority on one side um, so it's nice and beautiful on one side, and then you have a nice, delicate, soft mouthfeel on the other. This is going to get golden brown in color. And then we are going to tri-fold this crepe. When you know your crepe is cooked and browned on the other side, we're just going to Again, use our hands very gently, fold the crepe in half, and then fold this half directly in half. But that's all you really need. This guy can get set off to the side, and we can start a brand new crepe. We're done preparing our eighth and final crepe. We're going to set these in the oven to keep warm while we prepare our maple creme fraiche. So the last step to preparing our crepes is our maple creme fraiche. So we're going to start with just a little bit of creme fraiche, and then we're going to add a little bit of maple syrup. And we're going to stir this just to ensure we work out all of our lumps. So that's done, taken care of. We're going to take our crepes out of the oven. Again, these aren't cooking. These are just kept warm in a hot oven. We will place two crepes right on to the middle of our plate. We'll take a little bit of our beautiful Greek yogurt and just about We'll spread it out on the dish. So we're just going to do about a half a tablespoon here, and then one here, just to give you a little bit of contrast throughout the dish. As you eat it, you know you get a little bit of everything. So we're going to top with our pears, beautifully caramelized pears. Kind of stick that tail up, let them lay against one another, show off that beautiful color. We'll drizzle with our maple creme fraiche, just around the plate, and then also over the top. 
and then our pecans. So the pecans have been cooled, and then we just chop them slightly with a sharp knife um, just into these wonderful bite-sized pieces here. And then you're just going to cascade those over the top just to add a little textural contrast to the dish. And now we taste. The pears are just so wonderful this time of year. The maple creme fraiche really adds some sweetness, and the textural contrast from the nuts are just make it a very well-rounded dish. It may take a few tries to create the perfect crepe, but now you'll have all the techniques to make a beautiful breakfast treat or a decadent dessert. You can find the full recipe with exact measurements in the link below, and make sure to subscribe to find more Publix Aprons Cooking School online videos and other content from Publix. Thanks for watching.